Ladies and gentlemen, how you all doing? This is Khan Ulrich, and I'm here with Rang Ru. Hello, hello, hello. And folks, we're over here on the map of Cell, so um, make sure you have airplane mode on, because we have ourselves a nice little match going on between who, Rang? Well, on the left-hand side in blue, we have the J... Oh no, we have the Lagvulin playing as 78th Sturm Infantry Division. We have Maverick Income. And on the right hand side, we have the JSF Phoenix Phoenix playing as Third Guard Mechanized Core with Balanced Income. Well, one thing I can tell you over here about Phoenix is that that philosophy is going to give his life for ire in the South. He's got partisan DPs for days. Oh, God, that is all. I mean, it makes sense, especially on this map of all the forests. This is perfect for partisans. Maybe not some of the DPs, but the regular partisan squads on the Molotovs, so you can have a very fun time. In a forest. So, perversely, this might be one of the few times that the T-26 is going to be a really, really strong counter with this, uh, I would say, early light vehicle play from the 70th Sturm. Yeah, yeah, just good, cheap, and also it's Recon Optics, good, cheap vehicle that you can get to just, just help out. Not the best armament, but, you know, an armored machine gun with a small HE cap. Oh, no HE, but an armored machine gun is still decent. Very true. Now, the biggest issue here is going to be those Emchas and Emcha Komoroti down to the south. And of course, a single one to the north, and I think that's where the main um, axis of the axis play might come from initially. Mm hmm. Outside of that, though, somebody in Sturm over outgunned over here early on? You think? Uh, well, infantry. Infantry rise, not really, because they got the best infantry in game with the STG troops and the. Shuchin, like the Shuchin Scrodge. Mm -hmm. But in terms of armor, it's definitely going to be a bit harder. Is this a lovely map for Shermans? And for 78th Sturm, you got Stugs, which don't have turrets. And yeah, that's really all they got in terms of armor. I'm not going to use Nashorns on this map. Oh no. This is this is not a Nashorn approved map. Well, elephant tries again. Rhinos are much more kind of like plains animals. They're not really like hills and forests too much. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly, Khan. Hey, I, I watched the Animal Planet. I know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Uh, But um, we are definitely going to see, I would say, some early Soviet gains here, if for no other reason than the fact that there's a lot of heavy lifting that's going to be done by that Emcha. Yeah, yeah. I mean, up north, I think Emcha uh, shot off a truck or two, and that doesn't provide fantastic fire support. And especially with a 50 cal. Indeed. Indeed. Now, unfortunately for that pack 40 in the back, there is still an M Partizani, uh, you know, MG42. Ooh, ooh. First shot on that MG, much might be another kill. Incendiary. Jeez. Good pack 40 placement. Yes, fantastic. That's an What's abide. more, as well, we are seeing. The Russian mortars are just shelling empty ground, pretty much everywhere. Yeah, it's definitely been very presumptuous. I mean, it's definitely a good idea. I mean, you saw it down south of the run twenty mils, hitting the ground, but didn't really, didn't really do much. You know, it's Parzani pushed down south is definitely rather interesting to see, as there should be enough to overwhelm the, the lone. I wouldn't say it's enough to overwhelm the lone MG42, but. I know, it's quite a lot of ground between Yem and it. Yeah, but when you're being attacked by, you know, what? 48, 50 men all at one time, you can't shoot them all. No, you can't, but you can shoot a lot of them. True, true. Now, but Gleet uh, Grenadiers being called in to maybe stabilize the northern side here. Um, the initial P Grens kind of getting overwhelmed by the sheer number of PPSs, Molotov cocktails, and just the ridiculous amounts of, of most of the guns. Mm -hmm. Um. And what's the additional reinforcement? Oh, Pioneer Fuhrer. Actually, we are going to see a Nashorn, so... Yeah. Not quite in its natural habitat, but all the same. Yeah, I mean, it's still, it's still a Pack 43 gun. It will destroy absolutely everything. But it's going to get killed pretty easily, as there's not really many places to hide, and at close range, those shamans, you know, they have a pretty good chance to hit you with your paper-thin armor. Yes, they do. No, the complete grenadiers against that early partisans. I kind of want to see how this works out, because green cover, green cover. You would think 
that the MP44s and the MG42 should be enough to take them out, and, and judging by the initial losses here, good lord. Yeah, and also the mortar, the German mortar has been helping out quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, he, he, he's been not mess with 78 stun infantry, they just tear you a new run because of SCG Scrotch. Now, I am a little concerned for T26, who's engaging his former brethren. Um, I would be backing up right about now if I were him, uh, mm. but he and I seem to be on different wavelengths. Um, and I, I do want to call your attention back to that partisan thing you're talking about. Look at how they're placed in the south. It is probably the most parade ground ready <laughs> partisan troops you've ever seen in your life. Oh, and they did kill the uh, they did kill the MG42. Well, I just I want to see these guys all move up in a line, uh, Napoleonic style. Well, and Bagleet Pan uh, Grenadier is coming in behind this collection of Otamachikis, Partisans, and that Comroti. Oh, wow. This could be, shockingly enough, a very quick reduction of the Russian position. Yeah, I, I didn't really see how he managed to encircle him so quickly with just infantry, but I, I like it. I, I like it. I, I, I do hope he mortars... Yeah, forest first before he moves in the big leap pioneers. This will be on the safe side. But even then, the pioneers can kill the avatars. They got bloody SDGs and natural grenades. Yes, they do. And well, the strokes are there to kind of clean up anything that, that you know, stumbles out to the west. Mm hmm. But yeah, in but... case. I'm going, please go ahead. No, but it's still like 12 12 can't. Like, there's barely been any real. Productive progress from either side. It's been to small skirmishes. Now, I do like that there's a recon plane being brought on in. I don't think we're going to see any kind of strafing runs being done. No, he's just calling it in and then backing away as both these Cobras are going to take him out pretty quickly. <laughs> That's probably a very good call. Uh, but the Cobras are pretty fast and, oh god, they're, there. they're getting closer. Purball. I mean, 109's head to head. That's one. And now it's a two on one. You have the Cobra, you know, I don't care if it's a Mongoose or an ME one oh nine, you're not gonna oh. you're not gonna take two planes. Oh no, he, he did manage to force out one to fall back. And he is going to escape. I believe the Cobra is a little bit faster. It is. And then the one oh nine, so it's a, it's not much. Only about like twenty or thirty, you know, KMs, I think. But it's still just enough to kind of extend that distance. Mm -hmm. My mind is um. Oh no! Wait. Oh, you see the mortars on the borders are attacking to the north. I understand this. This makes sense. I'm not pleased with it, but it makes sense at least. Yeah, yeah. We still got that like Soviet partisan pocket. It's just stuck behind stuck behind lines. I would not want to be those troops surrounded by Stugs and big leech. Not an ideal position. No, not at all. And I don't even think these other superiors are going to be really enough to do with anything about it. Uh, I do like we're going to see a 37 mil being brought on in to kind of support any anti-air efforts to the north. Uh, but the mortar half-track, he is doing a good business. And I, I would like to see leader units be a little bit more, you know, front lineally placed by Lagavulin. Mm -hmm. uh, but I feel like they're kind of lagging it a little bit too much behind the front lines. So. Yeah. Yeah, oh, the uh, big leads are making their move in the middle. Yes, and, they are. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna clear up shop. Yeah, Pocket has done a good job at least of slowing down Lagov, because he hasn't managed to completely secure the hill, as he's left the right side undefended, and Phoenix is, or Phoenix is going to be bringing in a Sapper Rescrawl to hold him to the flag. Yes, but you know what? Holding the front lines as he is, if he takes his flag back, he still gets a bleed. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, that'd be perfect for him. And even Soviets more shocking. I'm sorry, please go ahead. No, Soviets are holding strong in that in that in that forest. I think to a certain degree, technically they have numbers. Maybe mm. not the quality, but I think quantity has a quality all of its own right now. Yep. Yeah. And, and though, really, when you think about it too, the pioneers did not take that many losses. They lost literally, I think, what six troops, seven guys. That's so, like over the two squads. That's a, mm. a solid performance. Definitely ideal. Now looking down south, you have MP44s entertaining some of these uh, partisans in the trees in that town, and actually the southern push is happening. We have four squads shifting, all eight squads moving in. 
Not in parade formation, unfortunately. Yeah, you know, they look pretty, but, you know. Yeah. And well, they're going to run into a little bit of trouble, as they have no AT and there's a T26 here. I mean, T26 is probably not going to have a good time either, a little bit overround, but... But, yeah. Well, the nice thing, too, is they still the Pack 40 there to kind of give at least incidental fire support. Mm -hmm. Nothing too really beautiful or worthwhile, but just enough to be kind of irritating. Yeah, he, he kind of has a pack 40 and a little bit of a bad spot. If you look at his line of sight, doesn't really have a good line down the road. I think he had it, yeah, to hope to get a good line straight through the road, but just for rare cover is it's just pretty much kind of blind. Certainly makes sense. Now, we are going to see, I think one. I think the Cobra's going to pick off an MB109 here. Yep, you're on fire. Actually, I think I eventually claimed it. Um, and we are going to see the T26, like you said, Fascinating for me. Oh no, okay, he's engaging the Dushka. We just had a Soviet tank man by a Soviet tank manned by Germans just blow up a British vehicle manned by Russians. Yeah, it's that's in right. Front. That that is a Bren carrier, isn't it? Yeah, it was a Bren carrier with a Dushka on top. Which is definitely a smart call putting a Dushka on top because the Bren's kind of rubbish. True. Now, a couple of partisan squads being brought into the front, still buying it. Kind of a bit of a shame here. Uh, mm -hmm. T26 is slightly readjusting himself to kind of just be competitive, I would say, against this initial Russian front line. And to the north, uh, about three batteries worth of Flak 38s being brought on in. Oh, jeez. That's, that's a lot. He spread them out. I do, I do like that. Well, mostly... Well, I wonder, I mean, that's all Colonel getting all out AA, but the problem is he definitely needs to bring some infantry down south. He, he, he really needs some infantry down south more than anything. He needs infantry or tanks or anything. Mm -hmm. Checking back in on that uh, central location over here, we do have the Glee Pioneers and Sapiris exchanging high explosives, and, and apparently... The Germans say, return to sender on that one. Um, <laughs> as they take out occasional squads. This Stoke here, though, to their west, is just kind of just scratching his bum, waiting for the action. Mm -hmm. He's just chilling. Okay, now he's moving up now. If he can get those Stooks onto the right side of that hill, we can pretty much shut down the reinforcement lines. Yes, if. Mm -hmm. And at long range, those Stokes do beat out Shermans, but... I mean, the Shermans are now moving up to South Etrancy, and they're going to be able to get in pretty close. And at close range, they, uh, they like fighting Stokes. Yeah, that's true. Um, and I think the accuracy, I think, is roughly about the same, I would say. Yeah, and main, I think it's mainly the stabilizers that really helps the Shermans, because they get that first shot. Even if a first shot doesn't get a kill, you usually get a good critical hit. Well, and, and the turret rotation speed. Mm -hmm. Because, hey, there's no turret. Um, now down south, the Partisans have been making a sustained rush. They have taken out that Pack 40, and for some reason that MG42 is still not, um, you know, un unlimbered, shall we call it? They probably have good air conditioning in the car, and they just don't want to get out. Well, it is a stylish car for that matter, too. Mm hmm It's a really, it's a, I'd like to be seen driving around in that, I'm not going to lie. You like to ride a horse? <laughs> Yeah, but even has, like, proper windows in the back, like you see in the house. Stoke is going to engage this first Sherman here, incendiary, not really getting that kill he needs. But firing on the bounce, and that Sherman does get a kill. Mm-hmm. As one stark, and he's kind of facing the wrong way, so once the Sherman moves up, up crush to hill, firing on the move, and it's... Oh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Three more superior squads being secure the hillside. And I think Laga has kind of needs to reposition some of this northern concentration, should we call it? And for some reason, he's bringing in Nigel over here to the south. So screw the fact that rhinos are in danger. He's bringing in the hero rhino to push oh. back the infantry. Why doesn't he have a. Why, did, why hasn't he brought any infantry down south? Why? 
you you need you need infantry here more than anything, especially seventy eighth. Yeah. And V face, you should have so much. Especially yeah. with your Maverick income. What's going on? I think he kind of fell in love with the idea of spamming out a hefty amount of anti and he kind of was like, oh, I'm forgetting something. Eh, uh, whatever, I'll get it later. Yeah, I, I feel like he's just looking at the northern side of his map and just completely forgot about the south, essentially. Which I, I understand, he might be a newer player and it, it's kind of a pain in the ass to, you know, cover seven kilometers of front line. It's a, lot, it's a lot to micro, I'm not going to lie. But still, just just, just get, some, get some infantry here. Just anything. Don't even have to push it. Just, just get some infantry to defend and try not to lose all these, all these flags. I do like um, active anti-tank being deployed to the north, though. We have a Panzer Shrek squad and a Vanik Storm squad, and this Emcha is going after the Stug, as is probably the appropriate idea here. Unfortunately for him, well, assuming they eventually get themselves into position here. Uh, he got to have two anti-tank squads in his rear, and I don't think he knows that anything is coming. He doesn't. No, he does not. Is this actually going pretty well for Lanka up north, at least? He's managed to take quite a bit of territory, and yeah, like you said, those panzer strikes are in a lovely position to shoot anything that comes down that road again. Oh Push god, he's getting LPCs tanks them. down south. Just more tanks. Tanks are blind. Okay, finally some infantry, some sturm shooting. So that should be enough to clear out the partisans. Yes, and for some reason, poor Nashua Nagel is going to get just pwned, I think, by the SU-85. Oh. Progress price partisan DPs haven't tried to get a little bit closer and just throw a grenade down the hatch. I agree with you 100% actually, mm -hmm. um, since, again, the Rhino has no close-in infantry defense. Unwrapped forever, which definitely not ideal in such, such an engagement like this. Indeed it is not. Now, check back into the north real quick. Uh, okay, you have a, a squad of infantry, okay. Well, things are slightly stabilizing, maybe not in territory, but in terms of potential venture here. But we do have three more, no, six more squads of infantry being brought on in. Guards all. Um, that's not what you want to be facing as the Germans. Not, oh. not at this stage in the game. Yeah, guard TPs, yeah, so at long range, they do have a pretty good shot against the 78th infantry. Yeah, in the middle hill, I mean, Baker Elite Pioneers are really cool, I'm not going to lie, but having a bunch of Sapperies is even cooler. Well, especially with two m -chars in your rear, so, yeah. uh... <laughs> Run away! No, not yet, Ray. This, again, is one of those moments where you have six machine guns being fired at you. Yeah, I, I would surrender, my yeah. friend. Bloody love shamans. The Steel, the Steel Division games have made me appreciate... Sherman tanks. You know, and I get why, but a part of me just wants to be petulant about it. Uh, are we seeing any ground attack planes? Nope, just more Cobras. Mm -hmm. At the same time, Phoenix is a bunch of Shermans down south, all the way in the back line, not really doing anything. Oh, those three, yeah, they've been there for most of yeah. them. They've actually, they were there in the initial um, parting of the game. Oh, wow. And the uh, 20 mil cannons take out Nigel. Mm -hmm. And the stock's gonna be crossing over. No, no, he's gonna back off. That's probably a smart move. Yeah. Yeah, it's really, really all the action is happening up north, and yeah, Phoenix. He hasn't really made, like, I, I was, like, a crazy push. Even though he has a lot of territory, he's just been, you know, strolling the partisanis up for open territory and just claiming a bunch of land for free. Bluesy and a purchase style. Now, weird thing about that, though, is we actually are seeing four anti-air guns being brought on in. 
which I get the dual nature of using them against infantry. I'm not sure I see the investment of that over legit infantry. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I'm not entirely sure what's going through his head. And I don't mean that, I don't mean that in a derogatory <laughs> sense either. So maybe he's got himself a plan. Like, this is a base of fire and we're going to build onto that. Yeah, hey, he's got some storm shooting moving on the northern side a bit down south along mm -hmm. the hill. And you got to realize those storm shooting draw just. They just tear apart the parts out, especially with two star fetch when she. It's just about just getting the infantry, yeah. You don't have to do that much in terms of micro, they just. You see, it as, well as part of hand DPs and almost dead. Yeah, this does have a very New Hopey vibe to it, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. As the stormtroopers come on in and take out everything in their path. Oh, those rebel, those rebel troops are you kind of annihilated by those blasted blasters. Now, I, I confess to being a, a bit of the uh, the old nerd is in me. Um, but I remember reading something about why the stormtroopers are so bad with their aim, and there's a plot point I never really paid attention to. They let them go. Oh, yeah. All of them were literally just being told to not actually kill them, which is just impressive as all get out. Yeah. Whoa, and the Cobra gets um, clipped over there, gets stabbed into twain by the four Flak 38s. <laughs> so I know those like, pieces has helped out with something at least, and he's finally getting like, a storm shooting squad all the way down south, which is what he needs, and he's dropping in quite a lot of artillery here too, so he's actually buying a lot of artillery, good god, that is, that's a lot of guns. Yeah, he has the income to do so. Oh, no, 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 it's it's C phase, so he has the complete opposite of the income to do so. Meanwhile, um, hooked on Phoenix over here is bringing in another five squads worth of uh, guards DPs down south. Mm -hmm. He's decided that I think he's going for the kill shot here. Yes, North has been a lot of action, but I think North for him is just a sideshow. He can afford to drop a point or two. I mean, actually, yeah. he, he can afford to just drop about almost a kilometer. He doesn't really, even really need to be holding that position. Curious. Yeah, yeah I feel like he's starting to lose a little bit. I mean, this artillery is going to definitely river raise part of Sani DPs down south and... You know, once once some infantry actually move up to clear, clear it, it should come under Langer's control again. We still have MCHAs though. And you can yeah. push in as much as you want to, but the MCHAs, for all of their flaws, are two breakwaters for that entire push. Mm -hmm. And once the guards come in, they can actually give some eyes on for the MCHAs. Exactly. And like right now, he's shelling his own troops. <laughs> This is planned. <laughs> They'll never see it coming. Dude, if I shoot my own <laughs> troops, they're gonna get confused and figure out what's going on. And then I can push. That your troops will get confused and push? Both sides will be confused and no one will know what's going on. Uh-huh. That's, that's my plan. Complete and utter chaos. Ah, the crazy Ivan attack. Mm -hmm. Got it. Now, bizarrely enough, despite the fact there's a couple 37 mils, we haven't really seen committed AA other than that, uh, you know, what do you, what do you call it? an entire hiss of cobras, whatever the heck that's called? <laughs> P-59 cobra? Yes, but what do you call a group of cobras? I think I feel like I should have known that at some point. I don't know. That's actually a good question, because snakes are, like, solitary. They're not, you don't really see great snakes in groups, unless, unless they're in a pit. Yes, or Indiana Jones movie. Yeah, like in a, in a pit, yeah. So what would you call a group of snakes? Would you call them... Snakes? It depends, are they on a plane? <laughs> if that's not the case, then I've had enough of these mother effing snakes and these mother effing plane. But until then... Until then... um, We also have some more superior being brought on south, and we still have that 120 mil who's had a ton of munitions, and I can't help but feel that uh, Phoenix has forgotten about him for the moment. Oh, yeah. He's just chilling. <laughs> Judging by that sound, so has our uh, caster. <laughs> yeah, it's just, I'm very curious about this match. I, I feel like both sides are pretty new to, to ST2, just judging by 
playing the play micro and unit choices, but Phoenix has managed to well, he's managed to push a bit a bit more. Just just yeah, I this has been a very interesting match. It certainly has. Now I do like seeing this concentration of artillery. I would have loved to have seen it get spread out a touch more, especially since those multias that have brought them in are technically all munition trucks as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we're not seeing that. Instead, he's pounding the ground looking to get, take out these MTRs, which is asking an awful lot of HE shells. And more ZSUs. So, at long last, anti-air being brought on in by Phoenix. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I have to... All them 17s being brought out and run ginormous group. Yeah, like a... I mean, he has the potential to really... He does have potential to push in terms of units. But he's really screwed a pooch in terms of... Whoa! And, that was a quick yeah. surrender. Okay, yeah, here we go. And... Shockingly... Uh, yeah, Phoenix second victory. Really quite close, though, in terms of kills. That is shocking. Very shocking. Here's why. There is one, sh one Sherman who's got five kills and everybody else has less than three. Okay. I guess it's just because he managed to nick a bunch of ground easily with the Partisanis, and then they didn't really kill enough in those Partisanis, they just kind of slowed down the Germans enough. And bled them in terms of VPs, mm -hmm. yeah, you're right. Yeah. We had a big leap pioneer doing the, I think that was a really cool flanking maneuver. Mm -hmm. out quite a few. Even, even Nigel got a kill there before he blown up. Yes, but you know what? When you have a guy who costs quite that much, you kind of want to see him get a little bit more than one kill. Yeah, he did, uh, it's not uh, cost efficient just blowing up one Sherman. You really need to blow up two to pay yourself off. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But yeah, if if I can give constructive criticism to Lagger, just to spam more infantry. Just well, and before you bring in. And to spread them along the line too. Yeah, if you if you're gonna bring up tanks and anything, tanks and ST two are blind. They cannot see anything without infantry. Before you even think about pushing, this is for any ran, any match in the ST two. Before you even think about pushing an area, your first thought should be, do I have infantry? And if not, I need to bring it in. To they don't need to like spearhead the push, but to be brought in after you make the initial ground gains to actually hold the area and spot stuff for your tanks and clear forests and towns. Exactly. And I do actually, I will say from the Laga side of things as well, love the artillery. Maybe split up your assets a little bit. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah, JS yeah. JSF, um, very interesting opening. Yeah. Very interesting opening. I was going to say, I don't really see a Partizani opening very often, but a unique attempt there. Now, if I could give a little bit of constructive criticism over there, is that, and we say this to a lot of players, if you're holding the line someplace, test your opponent someplace else because he's not paying attention. Mm hmm. Always, always do that. Um, but let it not be said that that was a bad game. It was just a very, very interesting game to kind of watch from our perspective. Yeah, definitely two newer players. Uh, but regardless, I think that's going to complete our OSHA, excuse me, Orsha. This is not, um, a safety hazard site. Um, <laughs> do you so, have your PPE on, Khan? Yeah, actually, you know what? My headphones are on and everything. So we're all, my, you know, hearing, hearing defense is already deployed. Um... But with that in mind, our, our Orsha Cup coverage for this week is going to be all set. Uh, I think until next week. Uh, Rang, any other final thoughts? No. No. All right. And in that case, folks, uh, we're going to call it quits for right now. We'll see you all soon. I'm Con Ulrich. I'm Rang Roo. Take it easy.